Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm going to walk you through our Checkout API. Using the Checkout API is the simplest and fastest way to integrate Square to accept payments. With just an API call, you can create a Square-hosted Checkout payment page. We'll cover three different ways you can create payment links using Checkout API. To get started, you'll want to be sure you have a Square developer account already. The three ways to check out we're going to cover are Quick Pay Checkout, Subscription Checkout, and Square Order Checkout. Let's take a look in API Explorer. Here we have the Create Payment Link Endpoint. No matter which type of checkout we're creating, we need to provide an item potency key, so I will set that here. Now we can skip down to the Quick Pay field. This is what we use for creating a Quick Pay Checkout. This is useful for getting a payment for a fixed amount for an ad hoc item or thing that we want to charge a buyer for without needing to create an entire order. We just need to set the location ID, a name to specify what the charge is for, and the amount that the charge is for. When we run this request, Square will actually create an order for a single line item using the name and price money, and then attach that order to the payment link object that is returned. Next, let's cover a Square order checkout. This is done by putting all of our order data in the order field. This works just like a regular Square order, which you can find more information about in the description below. It's important to note that you must define your order here, as Payment Links doesn't support using existing orders. You need to define the order within the Create Payment Link request. Now, finally, let's go over a subscription plan checkout. This is actually going to follow a similar process to the Quick Pay checkout. We will set the Quick Pay field name and then the Price Money field. The price should match the subscription plan price, otherwise, this acts as a price override. Then, we just need to put our subscription plan ID in the subscription plan ID field under checkout options. So, that covers three different checkouts that you can create using Checkout API. Now, let's cover how things work in Sandbox compared to production when implementing Checkout API. Here, we've created a quick pay checkout. Let's go and visit the payment link that we've created. You can see that we're on a development control panel. This is unique to Sandbox and allows you to simulate the different events that are triggered during a checkout. You can simulate when a buyer views the checkout link, when the contact form is filled, and when the checkout form is completed. In production, you would just see a checkout form when visiting the payment link. That covers some of the basics for using Checkout API. There are more options available for Checkout API in the checkout options, which you can learn about by visiting our docs, which are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to see what you build. Happy coding.